Hey guys, this is Kimberly. I am going to show y'all a tutorial today on how to cut out a multi-layered heat transfer design. I am going to be using one of the designs I have saved in my library um, that's available on the Happy Silhouette site group. Um, to pull an image up from your library in Silhouette Studio, you're going to go to the left lower end of your menu and open up the book icon that's going to take you to show library I have my library divided in several different categories but today we're gonna do the cheetah mini mouse bow you double click on the image and that brings the image up onto your screen for any saved um, items you may have in your library so to prep the design for Cutting, you're going to need to separate the layers out into three different pieces. Because I downloaded and saved this file, you can see when I move it around that it isn't separate, that it's all one design. This would be very difficult to piece together if you cut as is. So a way to solve the issue of it being difficult to weed and press is to select your image. And in the lower left corner, click ungroup selected shapes. You'll notice that several more boxes appear around your image and that you are able to take the pieces and move them individually as needed. You want to try and pull the tan image out from underneath the black because as you can see there's two black images, one with the cheetah and one with the bow. I'm going to Command Z because I use a Mac, but Control Z to put that bow back in place. For now, I am just going to group the two images together. The group is the very left icon at the bottom of your screen. Um, you will want to weld the images, and I will show you that a little bit later. So, to prep the rest of your design for cutting, I want you to move all of the selected shapes close together. You can select all by dragging over the shapes, or you can hit Control A or Command A. This selects all your shapes. It looks like I have some shapes already there from my practice run of the video, so I'll delete those and hit the Command A again. So, for all heat transfer projects that have a carrier sheet built into the heat transfer material, that's the shiny side of the material, you want to mirror your image. You go up to this little flower looking icon in the top right and it's the replicate window and you either want to mirror left or mirror right. Um, this flips your image in a mirror fashion. It's hard to tell with this design because it's fairly symmetrical but if you notice on the bows, they have turned the opposite direction. At this time, I take the original of my design and move it off to the side, just in case anything happens. And then put the mirrored image back on the screen. To prepare your image for cutting you want to put just the color that you're ready to use on your mat and then click on your page settings window just to verify that you have the correct cutting mat and page settings if you're using a smaller cutting mat smaller page or a portrait this information would all change for you I'm not using registration marks as this is not a print and cut so I'm gonna go ahead and skip over to the cut settings window excuse my email cut settings is going to be up in the top right and you'll see that when you click on this window it gives you your cut lines because you grouped these shapes as opposed to welding them you are going to see that you have too many cut lines in the bow area of the design to fix this I want you to select the shape and hit weld which is going to be down in the lower left corner and it will take those cut lines away because it has merged the two designs as opposed to grouping them 
This is gonna make it again easier to weave and easier to press. Heat transfer material shrinks the more you press it and it will um, not line up as well if you have cut marks inside the bow as they will start to shrink and that will show on your design. Um, from here, now that your cut marks are all correct, you want to go to cut and then pick your material type which will be heat transfer material smooth. For glitter material you want to do flocked. Um, and then make sure you have your blade set to the correct setting for your heat transfer material. Um, I tend to use the correct settings. For this video, my silhouette decided to tell me that my blade needed to be at an 8. Usually a 3 or a 4 works for smooth heat transfer material. Um, you pick the type of blade you have. I have a ratchet blade still. I haven't bought blades in a while. Or if you are going to be using a sketch pen for a sketch design. I tend to leave the speed and thickness alone. If your machine is having problems cutting your design, you will either want to increase your thickness or decrease your speed. Um, for the more detailed designs, sometimes this is necessary. My silhouette tends to do a pretty good job of having the right settings. Um, you do have some advanced settings. This is where you can minimize your roller movement, um, sort your designs, advance after the cut job, etc. I don't typically mess with these settings just because it causes more of a headache than it should. Once you've made sure your blade is set to the right um, setting, that your design is mirrored so you don't waste a bunch of vinyl by having a backwards design once you've pressed, you can send to the silhouette. I'm not hooked up to my machine, so I'm going to get a warning message. But once you connect to your machine, you can click start and cut your design. You are going to want to let your design cut. Take this off the screen. For multi-layered designs, once I've cut a piece, I usually delete the piece because I still have the original off to the side and then cut all the layers. You want to cut the layers by going through the same process of checking all of your cut lines to make sure they're correct, checking your settings to make sure you're on the right material type, that your blade is set correctly. This time it is going to show up a four for me and that um, your design is again mirrored. You will send a silhouette and cut again. And then you will do the same thing for the third piece. Since the bow is pink, it's a little hard to see the cut lines. You can change the color of the bow by going to this paint can up at the top and change it to any color you want. Go back to the cut settings menu and you can see the red cut lines. Again, go through the same process as the previous two layers. Cut out your design and you have got your three layer design ready to press. When pressing your design after you have everything cut and weeded, you are going to want to press in a the reverse of how you cut your design, meaning you want your base layer first and then your more intricate, intricate layers on top. So for this design, you're going to have the tan or the back side of the shape at the bottom. You'll press that. Um, typically for a shorter amount of time than you would press a single layer design. I will have a tutorial on pressing designs a little bit later. Um, but you'll want to press your base design, then your detail design on top of that, lining them up so that you don't have funny edges anywhere. You wouldn't want to sell a shirt that looked like this. Line them up well, which in Practice is a little bit difficult. I have made several of these shirts that have not wanted to play nice. And then you want to put on your finishing touches very last. Again, I mentioned doing the t bottom two layers for a shorter press time. When you are pressing the bow into the design, you would want to go ahead and do a short press time as well and do your final press as your full length press time. Again, there will be a tutorial on that later. Thanks for watching, everybody.